Well, hey, it is Wednesday, October 14th, 2015. My name is Dee Williams. If this is your first time here, super duper excited to have you on the line today. We are doing our Q&A session for the day. And as you guys know, I will be opening the lines up in about five minutes for everyone to dive in with their questions. I typically start our first five minutes off with giving you some information about the industry or or maybe to give you some pointers on how you can ultimately grow your staffing business in the most amazing way. And today I really want to talk a little bit about mindset, okay? I was on a call last evening with one of my one-on-one coaching clients and they had they told me that they were listening to some of the past Q&A calls and they said, "D, I can hear that some people are feeling a little um, you know, you can feel their energy in regards to not being or feeling successful regarding the um, business development piece. And I thought that was very interesting. And I say, yeah, you're 100% right. And he said, you know, it's their attitude. It's the attitude of an individual that really determines their level of success. And I really felt like he said a thousand words that day, you know, yesterday. I felt like that was a thousand, it was a thousand words because it really is all about your attitude in this business and what you believe that your outcome will be in this business. When we're talking about business development, it really is about, um, you know, thinking about how finding ways to find, to build relationships with people to where you are, you know, I don't know the best way to say it. Think about how you would want to someone to build a relationship with you. And that's the only way that I can possibly you know, describe it. When I give sales calls throughout the course of the day, I'm always intrigued at how someone approaches me and what their idea of, of, of connecting with me feels like and seems like. So I had a guy reach out to me the other day and he was telling me how he was just crazy about my LinkedIn profile. And I thought, oh, he's coming in on right. He's, he's saying the right thing. And then when I said, okay, what did you like about my LinkedIn profile? He went into a complete blank. And I thought, so this guy's pulling my leg. He really did not go to my LinkedIn profile. Or if he did, he didn't read it because my profile is very unique and it stands out. Um, so it immediately turned me off and I wasn't interested in the phone call. But then I got another conversation, another phone call, and the gentleman wanted to show me all the different ways that he could assist me with my business. And I asked him, what do you know about my business? He said, well, I know that you've created Staffingpreneurs Academy, and I know that you're passionate about this, and I know that this, this, that, that, that. And I thought, this is somebody that I want to work with. He's aware of what I have going on in my business. He's taken the time to follow me. He's taken the time to see what I'm talking about. He understands who my audience is. And he's got a good, not fully, but he's got a good idea of where my weaknesses are and where I need to grow my business. I gave him my money. I gave him my business. He understood. He didn't just pick up the phone and call me and try to pull my leg. He didn't just pick up the phone and try to sell me something that I didn't need. He literally took the time to understand what my business was, what I needed, what challenges I may have been experiencing, and then gave me some ideas about some of the ways that I could kind of maneuver those challenges and make them more awesome. So much that I started taking notes down and said, oh, I need to call these people. Oh, I need to do that. This guy was super duper helpful. And I was more than happy to, to take time out of my schedule to talk to him again. I was more than happy to move someone on my calendar so that I could talk to him you know, um, because I knew that he was going to help me take my business to the next level. What are you doing to be able to develop real relationships with people? 
what are you, what type of research are you conducting with your hiring man on the hiring managers that you want to do business with? Are you really diving into their business or are you so pressed for a job order that you're not taking the time out to do the research on the company and to provide a true solution? Where's your mindset even around that? Are you thinking, D, I don't have time to do that. I need a job order. Or are you thinking, you know what? This business is important to me. This is something that I absolutely want and need to do. Let me take the time out to connect with these people on a bigger on a bigger le level to see what they need and to become a real solutions provider. Now, you guys hear me talk about Lori in Houston, and I haven't looked to see who's on the call just yet, so I hope she's on this call. But one of the things that I like that she does is when she's talking to these hiring managers, she's throwing solutions out there at them. She's asking them pertinent questions about their business. Now, granted, she does have an HR background. However, she it doesn't you don't need an HR background to ask important questions. The other thing that I like about her, one of the things that I like about LaShawn, who made the four placements in a week last week, the the thing, one of the things that I like about Brian up in Boston, who did, who hit his million dollar mark this year. OK, his first year's anniversary was August. The things that they're doing is not just asking questions, but they have no fear. OK, the, the world is their oyster. They are out there on the calls, making phone calls, getting to know people, networking with people. The word hard or or none of the words that are associated with fear are ever in their minds. It is really more about go get them in mentality. I got to go out there and get it. I got to go out there and make it happen. Oh, my goodness. How many more job orders I can get? The staffingpreneurs that are making placements are more worried about how they're going to keep up with the business that they have than they are worried about how they're going to establish relationships with new hiring managers. Because that part is really the easy part. It's just about having the conversation. So for all of my staffingpreneurs that are on this call today, that are concerned about business development, that's wondering, how can I get my first job order? You know, I want you guys to understand fear is not an option, whether you're acknowledging that you're in fear or whether you're not. That is not an option. Your main focus, your main goal, the self-talk that you're having within yourself all day, every day is that I am a staffingpreneur. It is that I can do this. It is that everyone that I connect with is going to be someone that I can utilize either today or tomorrow. All right. It is excitement. It is fun. It is easy going. It is carefree. It is. I am a millionaire. It is all things that relate to what you want your end result to be. Not in what not related to what your fear is. If you are thinking, I don't know if I can do this. You are not in the right business. I'm sorry to tell you that because in this business, my loving staffingpreneurs, you have to connect with people, build relationships, and have the mindset that it can be done, that it will be done, that it is done. All right. Woo! I had to get that thing amped up this morning. All right. Okay, so I'm going to open the lines right now. I'm going to open the lines for everyone to get in, to get involved. It looks like we have about 13 people on the line today, which I have three text messages. People are still coming in. I want to just give a shout out to some of the people on the call before we get started. Let me open up the lines here. Hey, Lori. I see Shakina Warren. And Val, it's good to see you. Virgil's on the line. Renosh is on the line. Herring Bender, I love you. We've got Jim, Lavinia. It is so good to see you here. We've got Nicole Hackett. I mean, the line is on fire. We've got Ryan. I am super duper excited to have you all here on the line today. The floor is open. The lines are open. Happy Wednesday, Staffingpreneur. Hello. Hi, D. Hey. Hey, D. Hey. Hey, hey. 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 <laughs> It is so good to see you guys. Before you start talking, I want you to put your phone on mute if you're not talking so that you can all hear everyone. However, you are live, you can hear 
all conversations with your phone are not on just so you know Deshaun also, I want to remind you that we have another I because I can't hear. I'm sorry. I've got to mute everybody out really quickly because I, I can't hear and I don't want to yell. Um, I just want to remind you really quickly that we have the meet and another meet and greet on Saturday. I think it's at 10 or 11 a.m. If you haven't signed up, please do so. If you haven't checked out last week's meet and greet, it is on the um, in the academy. And this week, I'll be able to record the video. And we all know how the video works now. So we can get in. Okay, I'm unmuting the lines, guys. I want you to bring your questions to the table. It is your time. All right, the lines are open yet again. And I am ready for anyone to ask their first question. Hold on. Hi, Shakina, how are you? Hey, Shakina, how are you? Uh, I want to tell you, I want to uh, thank you and Ryan for giving me a shout out. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> during, the, to it. during the Q&A call. Hold on one second. We've got somebody talking in the background. Hello. People must think you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hold on. That's funny. Grandma is very aware. She's very aware. I said, my mom is smart. Hold on a second. I told her that. Hello. Mom, that's you. That's not. No, I know it's not Lori. Okay. Hold on. All right. I mean, I must have a full little conversation. You have been here all the time, so you just don't be telling Hello. me. Hello. Mom, you're, you're the oldest. Why do you let her walk over you? Now, if Dad were here, none okay, of that, hold on. that would happen. Okay. Hold on. It's not about arguing. You let people know, like, you know Hello. what? Hello. 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 There's a full-blown conversation going on here. Nicole. No, you let people know. You Nicole. let her know, like, I'm not playing with you. That's oh. what Dad would have said. I'm not playing with you. <laughs> I'm for real. Hold on, guys. Okay, that's who that was. I'm going to so embarrass her. <laughs> okay, so I've opened the calls up. I'm going to so embarrass her and let her know that we can hear her full conversation. All right. Um, the, um, I'm sorry. Now, you were saying something, my love. <laughs> I was saying something, um, D. I was just saying that um, I want to thank you and Ryan for giving me a shout out on the uh, meet and greet. And yes, we talk so much, and he, he's a wealth of information, and we're constantly sharing information, and we plan to work together in the future. And I, I wanted to ask you a question. How do you feel about job fairs? How do you feel about, like, you know, drumming up uh, candidates at job, job fairs? <laughs> Shakina, okay. Shakina, you there? Yeah. Oh, okay, my love. I apologize. We had some feedback there. Um, okay, so how do I feel about job fairs? Job fairs, Ryan is laughing. He said that was funny. Uh, <laughs> job fairs are, I think job fairs are awesome depending on what niche you're in. So there are going to be some niches that job fairs won't be super beneficial for especially when you're talking about in the IT space. If you've got a niche where there, where it's very easy or it's very hard to find a specific skill set, so like IT security, you know, they're not going to, you're not going to find a lot of IT security job fairs in the commercial space because those guys don't typically look for jobs. Typically recruiters are hounding those guys to try to, to try to place them. But if you're in an area where it's like customer service or administrative professionals or help desk um, or something in regards to that, then um, then yes, you definitely will. Um, you definitely want to go out there and, and to, to, to conduct a job fair. Now, if there are job fairs that are out there that you want to attend, um, as long as you're not investing too much money in there initially, then I would definitely go ahead and attend um, the job fair and, and don't think twice about it. If you um, 
if you and so job fairs are pretty cool hey david it's good to see you here so job fairs are definitely really really cool to to attend and to put on i would also look at potentially um conducting a virtual job fair because they're become really popular having online virtual job fairs do some research on that that's something that's, that's getting pretty big over over the time lori asked a question she said how much money is too much money for a job fair uh well i guess one it'll depend on your budget but you know i wouldn't pay fifteen hundred dollars for a booth at a job fair unless you're like in the cleared space um and you're looking for you know a high level skill set where you know you feel like uh, where those people know this is where we need to go in order to um to get it to get you know this, this job maybe three to five hundred dollars for a booth would be you know beneficial for you and again if you're putting on your own job fairs you're in a great space and again i would encourage you guys to use meetup.com as a as a way to um to bring your your audience to you and to be able to create events that are ongoing, on standing for your particular niche. Hey, Ryan, you wanted to ask a question? Thank you. Thank you, Shakina. I love you. I love you too. Ryan, did you want to ask a question? Can you hear me? Oh, wait, I got you offline. Hold on, Ryan. There you go. Yes, I, yes, D. I did want to ask a question, but for for a few minutes there was no audio, and I was a little worried. So it was kind of a double kind of. Are you there, D? And yes, I do want to ask a question. So <laughs> I apologize for that. We had some feedback, and I was. I, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I already have a. Um, David. I'm already subscribed David, to the exact MD. I have a couple of jobs up already. David, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yes. Um. My um. My question for you is, D. You said, you know, at the at the meet and greet that you did SS SSTCI with Polly. And my question to you is, could I ever do any direct places with the federal government? Say, you know, a, a federal government agency is looking for a project manager or a construction manager to oversee a project or all their projects. Could that ever be possible? Not on a direct hire directly through the government agency. Governments always go through some type of prime vendor. Now, uh, you know, and I've, I have not seen them uh, place someone direct hire, except for the DC government. So the District of Columbia, you still have to, excuse me, you still have to have, we've got technology going like crazy over here. You still have to have, um, you have to be on their, on their, um, their one of their schedules, but you know, you have to go through the proposal process to do, and they'll go direct hire through one of the prime contract vendors. So no direct hire on that side, but you could direct hire into Northrop Grumman. You could direct hire into Lockheed or CSC for okay. a project that may be working with the government 100% for sure, yeah. Okay, and, and and actually, you know, it's funny you mention that, that we have three, that, that we, we have like Northrop Grumman, Chanel Airport, Go ahead. You have North of Grumman. Ryan. Oh no, I lost him. Ryan, you there? Okay, we'll come back to Ryan. I'm not sure what's going on today, but we'll come back to Ryan. Let me just send him a message and say lost you. Ryan. Okay, I hear somebody typing. All right, we're going to move on to another question until Ryan gets back on the line. We have another question here. It's my sound, Renasha? I don't know. I'm, I'm just logged in. I haven't done anything differently. So I apologize if it's... Can you guys hear me clearly or no? I can hear you clearly. I have a question for you, Dean. This okay. is your video. Yeah. Hello. I'm here. I think someone has some like feedback going on in one of their call on one of their lines, but I'm not sure who it is. Like they're logged in in two different ways, like through the computer and through the phone. So I'm this not me. sure. I'm sorry. That's me. This is Lavinia. I'm. I typed in a few questions, 
And I still have another question. Okay. And I am logged in two ways. I don't know how. Okay, so you've got to hang up on the phone if you're going to be logged into your computer. Or well, sometimes it jumps off the. I'm gonna do the phone. So okay. how do I? Okay. Okay, that's what I heard. All right, great. Lavinia, are you there? Okay, Lavinia, are you there? This is Lavinia's first Q&A call, guys, so let's bear with her here a little bit. This is her first Q&A call. Lavinia, you there? Everybody's all mute, so if you're talking in the background, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Okay, we can hear you in the background. All right, so I'm going to wait for Lavinia to get back on the line. Okay, Herringbender, he asks a question. Any international splits board or resources as I have a C-level executive open school anywhere? So I don't think that there are any international splits boards just yet. If there is a lack of one, Herringbender, this, you can clearly create one. Most of the splits boards out there are typically in the U.S., maybe a few in the U.K. Um, I see that you're saying that you have a C-level executive um, open to moving anywhere. When you are marketing a candidate, um, there's a process that goes with that. So we shouldn't just be looking you know, worldwide for just a position. Uh, what what you want to do is to really screen that that executive well, to find out specifically um, what they're looking the for. Business. Hello, guys. I'm talking. Thank you. You want to look and see what that person is specifically looking for, and then you want to go and match them with companies that that um, that correlate with what this guy is looking for. That matches with what they're looking for. If that makes sense. So. Um, so it shouldn't, I, I typically don't have a candidate and go look for a split board to fill that candidate's needs. What I typically do is profile that candidate and then I do research on companies that fit what that candidate is looking for. And then I'll check to see if they have a, um, an opportunity, whether they do or whether they don't, I'll start reaching out to the executives out there and let them know that I'm confidentially, um, um, looking on behalf of a, a confidential client and then I'll go from there. So I want you to keep that in mind. We don't want to just shop people around. We want to shop them around with a purpose. Okay. So I hope that's helpful. Lori also says that Napa worldwide does international, but you have to pay to be a part of their network. And I don't know if they will take him. She says, maybe. She doesn't know for sure. So I'm throwing that out there. She, thank you, Lori, for that information for Herringbender. Um, and that's awesome. I want to go back really quickly uh, to, um, to do, 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 do. Lavinia. She had a question. She says, how do I post to free job boards to receive resumes? And do I need a business address to start my business or is this something I can get later? You definitely want to have a business address at a minimum, Lavinia, um, because how can you register your business legally without a business address? Um, that doesn't necessarily Well, right now I'm using, hold on for a second. Right now I'm using my address. I was asking that question. I know, I know. I do um, the setup that you need to launch and it says something about a business address that you can pay this company or whatever and use the corporate address well, that's where my said, question you definitely, comes from. you definitely want to have some type of address i don't know if i would use my personal address people do go in and google they may show up at your door that's dangerous so I would definitely have a business address associated with my business or a P.O. So box at that, a bare minimum. Oh, I can get a P.O. box. That would be good. Because I'm trying to find out my other question to you is that I'm going to the launching list and I'm trying to see um, what things that I would need just to simplify and set up my business and then add on what I need later, you know, so that I can get the fill for my business because this is my first
business I'm starting from the ground up and there's so many avenues that you show us pertaining to what we can use to run our business but what would be the simplest things that I can put on board like just the must-haves at the beginning everything on that launch checklist are your must-haves and and I that's why I put them on that list because those are all ways that are going to help you generate revenue and to be able to manage your business later on in a very efficient manner. Because I don't want to set you up for failure in the beginning. I want to set you up for success with lots of efficiency. Okay? You want to ultimately be efficient. So um, so I, I hope that answers your question okay. just a little bit. Um, um, yes, it does a little bit. But I guess I'm saying, um, how can I say this? Like a mailing list, I, I signed up for data.com. I have data.com. I use them to get you know the information that I need. The mailing list, if I sign up for the mailing list, I need to start paying them right now. I need to start paying my ATS right now. Everything I need to start paying right now to use them, but all of my stuff is not together. So that's my question to you. After I call and locate all these... If you're planning to launch in the next 30 days, you're going to use those things, all of those things in the next 30 days that correlate with your launch. So, yes, you're going to have to start paying for it now because you're going to start using them now. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much for those questions. I'm glad to see you on the call. It makes me very happy. Val, did you have a question? I saw your hand was raised. And I just want to go back really quickly. Lori, Lori uh, reached out to, Lori was, was, was responding to Herringbender. She also says they want people that have been in business for a while, she believes. Um, and Lori suggests for you, Lavinia, bad idea to use your home address, especially if you get sued. You want that to be separate. And she also says that you can go to the UPS store and get an address if you want a physical address for your business. Uh, that's awesome, Lori. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And that is very true about her being sued piece. David says, or P.O. Box. And Ryan is asking Lavinia, what's your niche? Uh, nurse practitioner. Ryan, nurse practitioner. Either, uh, nurse practitioner, emergency room, nurse practitioner, nursing home, and nurse practitioner, Levine. I think is. We want to do one niche, one niche, just one. And also, I want you to call your state or call your city and find out if you need to have a physical office to nurse practitioner. They said, I can work. they said I can work from home. I already done that. Okay, perfect. And you're in Ohio, right? Yes. Okay, that's great to know. Lavinia, I want you to focus on one niche. Just one. I do not want you to overwhelm yourself trying to focus on three to five different skill sets. Focus on one thing. If it's nurse practitioners, you love those nurse practitioners like nothing ever before, and you work that niche, girl. And when you make it, when that niche becomes big, or when you when you successfully um, uh, grow that niche, then you can start adding on additional niches. But since this is your first I, I have a question for you, Dee. Uh -huh. I have a question. My niche is nurse practitioners, but there's all types of nurse practitioners. There's nurse practitioners that work in emergency rooms, nurse practitioners for um, pediatric, nurse practitioners for yada, 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 yada. So when you say niche, that's why I'm trying to just focus on nurse practitioner either in the emergency room or either in the, um, you know, with uh, pediatricians, or that would be niche, right? Because if I say nurse practitioner, I'm saying nurse practitioners, all nurse practitioners and all the facets that they work in. Yeah. So I need to narrow it down to just a nurse practitioner either working in a nursing home or a nurse practitioner pediatric, right? I would definitely do that. And I would look to see what's great in your area and in the country as a whole. So like um, nurse practitioners in the pediatrics, is that very popular? 
If it is, and is there a large number of uh, nurse pre uh, pediatric nurse practitioners, then yeah, focus on that and maybe one other thing initially. That's not to say that you won't fill nurse practitioners in many different areas over time, but just because you're starting out, this is brand new for you. I just want this to be kind of a smooth process of you going in. So focusing on one of those two niches within a niche is great. I also want to state that uh, Shakina Warren says any state or federal level paperwork wants a real address because they will Google the address. And if it comes up at UPS, if it doesn't come up at the Postal Service, then they won't consider that acceptable. I also want to state that Ryan Nelson says, Lavinia, occupational medicine is also good. And then David Nelson has a suggestion, which he didn't say what it was yet but he's also throwing a suggestion out to you as well. They are giving you love here on the Q&A call, Lavinia. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. No problem, you're welcome. Can you guys hear me? Yes, this is David. Hey, everybody. Hi, David. Uh, hey, David. Hello, uh, Lavinia, is that correct? Lavinia. Lavinia, okay, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Um, <clears throat> just as an example, I would say, you know, uh, because it's my niche and I, I know it, uh, ER, uh, I'm uh, recruiting ER doctors and general surgeons. So uh, in the ER, the more nine times out of ten, there's more patients than there are doctors. So you, the, the patient's going to end up, you know, uh, being followed up and having more contact with the nurse practitioner than they will the doctor. So you're always going to need a doctor in the ER, even more so with nurse practitioners. So that would be a niche within the niche. Your, niche, your, your primary niche is going to be nurse, practitioner, uh, nurse practitioners, and the niche within that niche would be ER nurse practitioners. If that Does that make any sense? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. All right, so I, I figure I just want to get you, you know, get the ball rolling and help you uh, think along those terms. And then the cool thing about that is, Lavin uh, Lavinia, is that you will have the opportunity to um, hopefully connect with David because he is, you know, placing the ER doctors and then you guys could do some splits or maybe have some type of partnership over time where you, you are helping <laughs> these positions. So... Um, that's that's awesome. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, Lavinia. We have yeah, D, and also, um, real quick, sorry, um, Lavinia, um, also in my area in Lake Charles, um, these occupational medicine clinics are going to be exploding at the seams, and, you know, they're, they're going to need nurse practitioners also, and also, you know, we're going to have so much growth, so I'm going to have, you know, I'll, if you're interested, I can get you a lot of opportunities down here also. Just let me know. Nurse practitioner, what field? Like general practice or family practice or? Yeah, and mainly, and mainly in occupational medicine. Say, like when you're getting a job and you have to do a fit for duty physical or or, or a mask fit test or a drug screen. That's primarily you know going to be really needed also because you know the doctor is going to be so tied up that they're going to need to hire NPs to sign off on everything. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> I have a question about the mailing thing. So is it good to get a P.O. box or, you know, for my address? Is it good to get the P.O. box? That's what I'm not understanding. The P.O. box or get a UPS address, you said? I have a P.O. box for my business, and I have not run into any problems whatsoever, and I've been up and running since August 1st. Okay. So I just well, take in the information of, of my business that I have a business and just tell them I need a P.O. box or I put my address. I give them my address and then they set it up with my well, business. Here's the thing. What if you run into an angry client who has mental issues and shows up at your front door? Right. I understand. And Lori, Lori, Strub, Lori is an HR professional. And... Okay. He says, no P.O. box. Go to the UPS store and get an address. It's not expensive. It's like $20 a month. So I, I would, you know, 20 years in HR. I'm 20 years in recruiting. We're different than HR. Just from a legal perspective, I can hear what she's saying loud and clear. Please do not use your physical address. UPS store. Hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Ryan Hello. says, D, this call is on fire.
fire. Ah! <laughs> Lori oh, also thanks. says, hey, Ryan, this is Lori. I work in the healthcare IT and administration space. Can you get me some opportunities? Also, love you, Lori. <laughs> So Lori is networking on this call. I love it. He said, sure. So we got some networking going on here today. This is a beautiful experience here. Any more questions? We have also a new caller in. We have Lavinia today. She's new. We've got Ramona Adams on the call. Everybody say hi to Ramona. Hi, Ramona. Hey, Mona. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm in, I'm excited. This is my first yeah. time. <laughs> That's good. I would like to know how can we exchange phone numbers. I would like Lori's phone number and David's phone number in case I have questions because we're only going to be on this call for an hour and it's only once a week and I'm going to need support like more often than so, that. David, <laughs> what I would like for you to do is to go to the community forum. And then you guys can connect there and exchange information there. I don't really want to throw people's phone numbers. This, this oh, um, also, D, I I don't know if it works. Um, in your Staffing for News Academy, if you click on the individual names, you can send private messages. Yes, That's a good can. idea also. Yes, you can, because people private message me every day. <laughs> So yes, you can definitely do that in the academy. If you click on their names, you can send them a thank you, Ryan. That's why I just love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm sending love your way. I adore, you. <laughs> I adore you. Thank you so much. Hello, D. Yes. Hey, this is Shakina. I wanted to clarify with Lavinia. Uh huh. When I said at the state and local level paperwork, I'm not sure exactly what her niche, exactly what she needs on the medical side, but. I live in Maryland, and for the state of Maryland, they want a physical, real address. So my business is registered in my phone to check what your business is, because you don't always have your lease already to give a, a physical business address. Now, uh, say that again. I can't. Help. I didn't hear you at the beginning. I'm yeah, sorry. You're going you, you in and out your mouth by the microphone because you're going in and out. Could you hear me now? Oh, you sound beautiful. Well, I can hear you. Okay. Can, can you what start I, from the beginning when you were talking about, um, you were saying something about. You were saying about your addresses for your business? Yes. When you register in your business, you need an actual address. I know the state I of Maryland will not let you register your business with a, a UPS address, with a P.O. box. They need a real address for the state. I use my address with the Secretary of State. I use my exactly. address. With your state, you want your, now that's fine. But as far mm -hmm. as doing whatever business you're doing, the physical UPS address or PO box, okay, that's you know that's okay. So oh. that was the distinction that I was trying to say the difference with because for legal paperwork you cannot register with PO. I know in the state of Maryland you can. Well, in a lot of states. I just want to tell you, paper. Shakina, each state um, is different. Yeah. They have different requirements. So in Ohio, they may not that may not be the requirement there. You may it may be open because she can do her business from home. But in some states, you do have to have a physical address. I think just for security purposes, we're saying no, well, have an option other address. than, you know? That's what I'm saying. You have your business address, but a lot of times, a home address is still a physical address. That's not what I was saying. Oh, Rather, it's right. your business address, it's a physical, actual address. Okay. Some states have a problem with a P.O. box or UPS physical address because a lot of times even with your UPS physical address they're going to give you your, your actual mailbox number your PMB is going to be number whatever mailbox they give you so some people have a problem with that if they google it and it goes back to a UPS for the state late legal paperwork as far as you know doing legal paperwork but as far as just having an address to connect you on whatever website you want to go on or something like that I'm sure that's fine I just was saying on the legal side okay. you know registering your business yeah, so when, so I, sign up, I, when I sign up for all these job boards and stuff that I'm signing up for mailing lists, then I think it would probably be better for me to get the UPS and the PO box address too instead of my address. I just gave my address to the Secretary of State. So the other thing, everything else I sign up for pertaining to my business, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad I you guys told me that I'm going to give this. I'm going to get this UPS. Um, Address yeah. together. Is that address? Your mailbox number. That's how it usually. That's how it works. 
Okay. Ryan, yeah. you wanted to say something? Yeah, also, um, I just need to recommend for everybody on the call, um, invest money in a good labor and employment attorney because uh, a lot of wage and hour division audits and I-9 audits, any kind of regulatory agency problems and audits are on the rise. So having a good labor and attorney, labor and, a, and a, an employment attorney in your arsenal is really great because, you know, it can help you, you know, get through the audit. And then also when you're in the audit, you can use attorney-client privilege to keep anything confidential and not have the regulatory agency see, you know, hounding you down your back, so to speak. So that's just one good tidbit I want everyone to take away from today. Do you have any suggestions of people that they can reach out to, Ryan? Uh, sure. There's uh, there's Littler Mendelssohn. There's all kinds of labor and employment law firms. So Can you start a thread on the community forum for us? Absolutely. I'd love to. <laughs> awesome. Also, Lori says she knows a, 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 a good one if you need one, she loves her labor attorney. So, Lori, I would like for you to respond to Ryan's thread. Also, I want to note that when Ryan mentioned that we could use the private messaging and Staffing Preneurs Academy, Lori says she works, but no one has responded back to her. Y'all check your messages and respond back to my Lori. <laughs> okay, really Ooh, I'll, re I'll respond, Lori, so count me in. <laughs> Ramona um, Adams says, hello, everyone. My name is Ramona Adams. I am just joining and a new member. My niche is HR executives. Is there anyone in the HR area where we can stay in contact with? She also says, I'm in the process of getting my certification. WOSB, WBE is the right way to start as well. So she's women-owned, certified business, women business enterprise cert. Uh, Lori, that's something you were doing as well, right? Talking about about getting your your WBE certification? I think so. I think she's doing mine. I've been working with Ryan. And I'm starting my paperwork. Who's that? Shakina. Shakina. Yeah, my veteran owned yes. women's certification. Yeah, yes. I'm starting on my. I can't do my hub. I can't do the hub yet because I don't move into my space until January 2016. Okay. And you need a physical address. Some certifications you have to have an address. Okay. Um. I think that's the S. The, what is that? The AA, Ryan? You need an address and a hub. You need a, a yeah. One, well, right. Yeah, yes, for the hub zone. And also, you, you got to have your workforce at 90 to 50%. And remember, if your workforce falls below 90 to 50% and within so much of, a, of time, if you don't get the stat, right, thir I'm sorry, 35%. And if you don't get your staffing levels back up to 35%, then you're, you're decertified. So, you know, that's just one thing also. If you don't live in a hub zone, you got to get employees that live in a hub zone. So it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a two points, two key points that you must have. And wait a minute, the business has to be in a hub zone. Yes, that is correct. Yep, yes, yes. When they're speaking of hub zones and, and 8A, we're talking about government staffing for all of our folks that are not in that government staffing space, but maybe looking to go into that space at some point in their business. Ryan is on top of that area. Uh, Shakina Warren is on top of that area. I'm actually going to invite both of them to do a live class for us. They don't know it yet so that they can share some of this information on a global level. So um, definitely I want you guys to connect with them within the academy if you're Thinking about going into the government sector for your business or looking to, to get some government business. Lavinia asks, how can I register my business globally and where do I sign up for the meet and greet? So the meet and greet sign up is on the calendar within Staffing Preneurs Academy. And um, registering your business globally, I, Lavinia, as your coach, I would suggest right now that you start nationally and to and to get that down pack before you go globally. I want to make sure that you have that under your belt. It is not hard to register um, in other countries if need be. And we already have payroll funding companies now who can help you do that today if that's something you want to do. But, but let's just look at initially, let's look at, um, um, you know, starting here with your business on, on the local level for you and, and, and going further there. Um, and, um, okay, good. So, um, any other questions that we have today? I, have one thing. Yeah. I don't mean to seem so abrasive, but before we go, I have a quick question for yeah. you. It's Shakina. Yeah. Okay. So 
my actual business will be opening in February. I'll sign a lease in January. Awesome. But I want to start, I'm, my website is getting going. I want to start to staff before I open. What do I do and how soon do I get my ATS? Or, because I can't staff without having a physical location. Am I right? Say that, ask that again. It said I can staff candidates before having an actual physical location. You can, uh, well, it, it again, it's going to depend on the laws for your state. If your state says you have to have a physical location, then you may want to wait on the contract side. But on the direct hire side, yes. If they don't require you to have a physical location, then you can do both. Okay. I got to check with my uh, city planning and zoning to see yeah. what, if they need any extra permits or licenses or not let I doubt it because it's just office. But um, I'll check because I know in retail you have to have your lease because it connects to your sales and use license. So that's what I was telling everybody that one step connects to the other depending on what you need. You have to have a physical address. So I'll check with them. I think I'm just okay with office. You know that I don't need I don't need any extra licenses or anything. But I'm gonna double check and just to okay. See. Yep, that's awesome. We had a call. Um, Lavinia said, where's the calendar on and Staffing Preneurs Academy? It says view live webinar schedule. If you click on that next to the welcome tab, then you will, the calendar pops right up and you'll be able to see it right there. And for all the new, new people, new staffing preneurs, um, join the conversation on your tab, on your menu tab in the academy is where the community forum is where you can go in, have conversations. I don't typically respond, but I see every message that comes across the academy. So I know who's active and who's not. I love the activity that I've been seeing. Um, if, if, um, and I get tons of emails and text messages as well. So I really want those, uh, all of those messages ultimately to end up in the community form. Let's make it great in a place for everyone to share information, to gather information and to ask the right questions there as well. All right. Um, good and the community, the community forum is under the welcome tab, right? Uh, the community form is under join the conversation. Join the conversation. Okay. Okay. Any other okay. questions? I do want to thank Ryan and Lori and Lavinia, and I want to thank Shakina for all, like, just being very uh, interactive. David, thank you so much for being very interactive during this call. Herring Bender, thank you so much. You guys have been Awesome. I hope I, I said everyone has been interactive. Anybody that hasn't been interactive, it's okay. This is your first call, or maybe you're just here to listen in to see what else is going on, and, and to maybe uh, the, the community is answering some of the questions you may have had. Um, feel free to, to, um, to join into the conversation. If not today, we're here every Wednesday. Next week, we're meeting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Our 7 p.m. Q&A calls are pretty packed. So um, come with your questions. You can ask live on the line or you can type it in the Q&A box. And as you hear, I will definitely share the questions with the group. Um, any more questions? I don't want to hold you guys. I know you're working hard talking to your clients and talking to your candidates. I'm so excited. Jim, I hope things are all well with you. I see you're on the call kind of quiet today. I'm so thankful that you're here. Val, I'm thankful that you're here. Renasha, I know you're at work. I'm thankful that you are taking time. Deshaun, mwah, I love you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, guys. If you need anything, please ask. We've got literally 11 more minutes if you have another question. Okay, well, then we're going to go ahead and end the call right now. I love you guys so much. Please don't forget to register for Saturday's meet and greet. Even if you were on the last one, there will be more people on the Saturday call than um, on the last call we had on Thursday. Please have your hair combed or ready. No excuses, Lori. <laughs> and your makeup on if you need it. Um, you know, I want to see your faces. Shakina says she will be there. We will be on camera. I will make you panelists so you can see. I will have two screens recording so that when we record this one live, 
You guys will be able to continue to see each other's faces. I am going to flood your emails over the next few days, reminding everyone to sign up. It was so awesome. I will not cry during this one as I did during the last one. <laughs> I absolutely love you guys. I will see you Saturday morning. This is sending so much love and positive energy your way. Do it, guys. Staffingpreneurs, win the business. Win the relationships. You've got this under the bag. I love you so much. Enjoy your day. Bye, guys. Take Bye. care. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Enjoy Bye -bye. your day. Make it count, as Ryan always says. <laughs> that is, you are correct. You did make it. Okay, see you, Sonequa, and make it count. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Bye. <laughs>